This thing all things devours. Birds, beasts, trees, flowers. A dangerous sickness that consumes all life like a vicious plague, corrupting man and beast alike, deforming their bodies, eating away their wits, driving them to madness. I am talking, of course, about rot. In today's video, I'm going to be decaying my way through Elden Ring as the one and only Servant of Rot. What exactly is the Servant of Rot, you ask? This abomination. Ugh, it's hideous! Looking like syphilis made flesh, or wet farts made solid. I can't quite decide which. Anywho, the reason I get to play as this dude is through Elden Ring's Convergence mod. The Convergence mod can be summed up quite simply. New weapons, new bosses, revamped areas, it basically reignited my love for the game, and I couldn't recommend it more. But that's enough rambling. Stagnation leads to decay, after all. And today, we are the decayer, not the decayee. Are those real words? Probably not, but I'm sure you all knew what I meant. First things first, we gotta give ourselves a spicy name to show that we mean business. Rotius Maximus. Wow, did you think of that one all on your own, you clever boy? Yeah, um, I did actually. Yeah, 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 whatever, no one really cares. Ignoring that buffoon, we aptly began our journey right next to Caleb's Aeonian Swamp. Each class in the Convergence mod has a set path that they should follow in order to gain items which can increase the build's effectiveness, such as armor, spells, and weapons. The Servant of Rot primarily uses Faith and Arcane with physical damage. The following locations have Servant of Rot spells. Shimmering Rune of Rot, Kaled Waypoint Runes, okay. Glowing Rune of Rot, Seed Water Cave, nice. Shining Rune of Rot, Lake Rot, of course. And the Radiant Rune of Rot, Halic Tree Roots. Oh god, does that mean we have to fight Melania? Actually, no. No, it does not. But I didn't know that at the time. As usual, before I start any run properly, I pop over to my boys Grail and the Knight's Calf to cheese them for their sweet, sweet runes. That was surprisingly quick. Nice. <laughs> Easy. It was then time to begin our first quest along the path of Rot. This was, however, surprisingly easy and could just be found in a random chest in the Kaled Waypoint Ruins without having to fight anyone. Okay, nice. It's the Shimmering Rune of Rot. Let's see what this gets us. Okay. Pest Threads, nice. Chitinous Shell, whatever that is. Blighted Orb, Rotten Mist. I then did some remnant crafting, which is a special feature of the Convergence mod, and picked up the Curative Horn Charm, which gives you complete immunity to rot. Yes, you heard me. Complete immunity. Kind of overpowered, yes, but we take those, as I had a feeling it would come in handy later on. We then made our way over to Seathwater Cave to complete our second quest. The fuck is this? Huh? After being violated by that mushy glob of who the fuck knows what, we made it to the boss room and found ourselves face to face with our fellow countrymen, the pesky kindred of rot. Annoying as these guys can be, they get absolutely clapped by impaling thrust, so I just kept impaling him until he died. GGS, noob. Final kill, nice. And nice, pick up the glowing rune of rot. I then took this mysterious teleporter and, lo and behold, we arrived at the Lake of Rot, the very place we needed to be to pick up our next Rotten Rune. This one, however, would not be so easy as the first two. The Lake of Rot recently just got an extensive rework and many obstacles stood in our way. The first of which being this behemoth monstrosity, who I soon discovered hit harder than a fucking 18 wheeler truck barreling down the highway. But I eventually got into the swing of things and managed to whittle him down. I found that the poison dart spell that I just picked up to be pretty effective at dealing consistent long range damage with additional poison buildup. I then discovered that you could light these fires, and what I had to do next became clear. Me light fire, fire open doorway. 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 And the fire did indeed open the doorway. Shocking, right? But before proceeding to the Grand Cloister, I picked up a new weapon, the Blade of Scarlet Bloom, 
And to say this thing was strong was a massive understatement. Check this out. Let's see what this does. Oh my. <gasps> That's Despite my newfound firepower, Grand Cloister was still a dangerous place, and it took me embarrassingly long to get to the bottom. I've got this little sniper dude right here, so sneakily placed. What the? He just threw the fucking needle through his two friends. Yep, I'm pretty sure these Bowman dudes were toggling aimbot, and combine that with pest threats, and yeah, not a fun time. Bro, these things are not fair. <laughs> Lol, bro was really going through it. Calm down, buddy. It's just a game. I eventually realized that just sprinting to the grace at the bottom was my best option. And lucky I did, because instead of finding the coffin that takes you to a stall, I found the Shining Rune of Rot, which gave us a couple new goodies. Oh, this is where you get the... Okay, this is what I came for. Okay, cool. We got the Shining Rune of Rot. Excellent. Pest starts, Rotten Burst, Blighted Contagion. Superior incantation of the Servants of Rot. Buys a number of sticky threads from your hand, launching them. Buys a number of sticky threads from your hand. Okay, spider man. Dealing physical damage, this contagion can be cast in a rapid success succession. Okay, that's just a better Pest Threads. That looks annoying as fuck. This one, Rotten Burst, unleashes a powerful shockwave of Rot from your body, dealing damage and causing Rot build up for a short duration afterwards. Charging massively increases the size and duration of the rot cloud. Okay, nice. My next discovery was that an entirely new boss could be found at the end of the cloister, named the Vessel of Rot, who later turns into the Scion of the Sealed Rot God. Scion? Scion? Not sure which one, whatever. But I didn't know that at the time. He turned out to be quite a tank. And of course, being a Vessel of Rot itself, he was immune to all of our new spells, old spells. Great. And after finally yes. whittling him down, I made the depressing realization that he had another face and another face. got promptly clapped by it. Great. It turns out he actually has three phases and I mistook the second one where he goes into beast mode as the final phase. Nice. I decided to come back to him when I was a bit stronger, which meant that it was now time to acquire our final rune at the Halic Tree. To get to the Halic Tree, we needed to defeat this Clean Rod Knight located in Caelan to access the teleporter. Upon defeating him, we also picked up the Seal of Rot, which not only looked pretty cool, but it was just a direct upgrade to the seal you spawn with. Lovely. Unfortunately, the Halic Tree is still the Halic Tree, and we were severely underleveled for it at this point, so you can imagine how that experience was. Okay, now what? Nope! I managed to eventually pull myself together and make it through. Before taking on Loretta, I picked up Millicent's set, which was another direct upgrade to the starting equipment, giving us extra faith, arcane, and protection. Against Loretta, I discovered that Rotten Mist was actually goaded, costing low FP and procking rot on enemies who'd barely even inhaled one microgram of the toxic mist. It was then just a case of playing for time and reapplying rot here and there, and in the end she was no match for the power of rot. Standing in, she should be right. Is she rotted? Yes, she is. Almost done. Dodge for this. The rot's gonna finish it off. Nice. Okay. If I just play patient, then it's easy. Get a sickle and the radiant glintstone rune. We should get a shit ton of runes here. Yeah, okay. 240,000. That's massive. I also discovered a really cool new feature of the Convergence called Transmogrification. Did I say that right? I really hope so. Transmogrification. Wait. Yes, which allows you to change the aesthetic of your armor without actually changing the armor itself. Essentially, you can look however you want, whilst maintaining the boosts you need from specific armor sets for your build. <laughs> Wait, that's so cool. Yeah, like my armor's still equipped, and yep, I'm just naked. Wow, that's really cool, I like that. I then made my way through the rest of the Halic Tree to get to the roots at the base, where we could pick up our final Rune of Rot. And hell yeah, Radiant Rune of Rot, baby. Rot Spray, Aspect of the Scorpion. That sounds really cool. Blessing of the Sealed God. Embrace the Visage of the Sealed God. Oh, that's a lot. Increases all absorption by 20% and decreases stamina cost of attacks by 20%. Increases the FP cost of spells by 100% and lowers total FP by 30%. 
Poison or rot occurs in your vicinity, you receive sin for this effect, increase all non spell physical damage. And look. Okay, so this is just a melee buff. That looks pretty good. Spell casting speed buff 40 grants immunity to rot, poison, and death biting grants too. Okay, and this is the spell buff. Unfortunately, I did not have enough either faith or arcane to use these spells yet, but we would check them out later. And no, I did not fight Melania at this point. I want to say it's because I wasn't ready, but it's actually just because I'm a pussy and couldn't handle the sword crushing pain of dying anymore at this point. So with that, the build was complete and it was time to start the run properly. And who better to start with than Margit the Fell. Thou art of passing skill. Warrior blood must truly run in thy veins. Tarnished. I may have been underleveled for millennia at this point, but Margit was a different story. He turned out to be no match for me, and I put that boy to sleep. Good night, my sweet child. Three post. Okay, yeah, the damage is just obliterating him. And we'll get a charge heavy. And back up. Get another one off. Okay. Finish him off with this. Oh, he drew me. <laughs> okay, he actually drew me good there, but luckily this weapon skill just hits no matter what. But we didn't stop there. The same fate awaited the grafted cunt at the end of Stormvale Castle. Lowly tarnished, thou art unfit even to graft. And with miss. Nice, that should have given rot. One more. Come here. Nice, get the repose. Huge. And we can do one more charge. Nice, huge. And R2. Run up to him, get a charge. Nice, another repo. Get another repo. Nice, huge. Okay, clean it up. I can link him with this. No mistake. Oh my god. That was a mistake, but we got away with it. It's very low now. The rod's doing its thing. So now we get him with this. And that should end him. Yeah, there we go. Easy claps. I was feeling pretty strong at this point and decided to make my way straight to everyone's favorite stargazer, Radan. The only thing in our way was a new boss named Dak. Yes, that is his actual name, Dak. Fucking D-A-double-K. The only thing that's ever bothered me about this mod was this dude's shitty ass name. Anyway, my PC decided it wanted to go night night during this fight and I dropped to around 10 FPS with this weird black glitch thing going on in the background. I later found out after doing some research that the mod really struggles with the ray tracing. But by then it was too late, so unfortunately you don't get to see this fight. But now for the main man himself. I am General Radan Bipo Bap. Yeah, um, he doesn't have any voice lines, so that's what you get. <laughs> this wasn't too difficult of a battle, but I'd be lying if I told you I got it first round. We of course de aggroed his bow shooting antics at the start and clobbered him in the first phase with a combo of Rotten Mist and my Scarlet Blade. In his second phase, it was basically more of the same, but just cautiously so. The thing about Scarlet Rod is that most fights can be trivial trivialized, wow, that's a mouthful, if you just have enough patience. But I don't have that much, so watch me fly in like the brain dead buffoon that I am. GGS Rodan, GGS my friend. On my way to Morgoth, I discovered that you could transmogrify the Mausoleum Knight's Helm, which just made you straight up headless, which I thought was a fantastic addition. So of course, the rest of the run continued like this, and secured the Knight's Captain and his gigantic mace with the first fall to the power of decapitation. I also realized at this point that I'd been sleeping on the spells of this build and relying too much on my blade. Carrion Swarm in particular was especially brutal and put Sigur down like the dog that he is. Woof woof daddy. Carrion Swarm. <laughs> uh, if you're wondering what happened there, I actually lost my composure after saying woof woof daddy and had to redo this voice recording, but I thought it was a good idea to keep that in. 
Anywho, the rest of this fight went rather swimmingly, if I do say so myself. And then after Sigur, of course, it was time for Morgoth, the king of all omens. Have it writ upon thy meager grave, felt by King Morgoth. Feeling greatly inspired by the effectiveness of Carry On Swarm, I attempted to give Rotten Spray a try for Morgoth, which I was pretty excited for as I felt like it had potential, but I was unfortunately left bitterly disappointed, as although it did decent damage, it wasn't even reliable at proccing rot, and it inhaled your entire FP bar almost instantly. Ditching the Rotten Spray for good, the rest of the fight went by without a hitch, using a combination of Poison Dart and the Scarlet Blade. Felled by Rotius Maximus, have it writ upon thy meager grave, bitch. Brought you fool. Huge. Nice, I was clean. Dodging through the spear. Very nice. Basking in our victory, it was then time to travel to the crumbling Farah Missoula. Getting there works a little bit differently in Convergence mod than it does in the base game. Instead of beating Fire Giant and having Melona take you there, you have to go behind the Bestial Sanctum and go toe to toe with the legendary BBK. I've always liked the Gargoyle boss fights, except for the double one, that one's bullshit. They're undoubtedly tough and punish your mistakes most grievously, but they have many openings that you can take advantage of. And that's exactly what we did. I did abuse Aeone and Rush a little bit, but there's no shame in that. It's a high risk, high reward move, and these guys are immune to rot at the end of the day, so it was probably best to take them out melee style. Huge on the poise break. Big damage. Getting him low. Missed. Okay, he just shouldn't. He's glitched down now. Oh, oh just juked me. What the hell? Yes. Whew. BBK down. Take us BBK down indeed. The teleporter at the back of his arena then took us to Farum, where another new boss called Sierra, Blade of the Ancients, became our next victim. Sierra is basically just a roided up line guardian, and is the very definition of a glass cannon. He hits like, well, a cannon, but he has very little health, and we had no problem taking him down in the end. Okay, come on. Okay, the rod should finish him off here. We can finish him off. No! Come on, rod. Come on! Please! Wait, did we get him? Yes. <laughs> okay, it's fine, we got him. And you all know who comes next. Everyone's favorite doggo, Malekith, the blackest of all blades. Who's a good puppy? Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Thou who approaches destined death. Destined death. I'm gonna miss. Dodge, bleed. We'll just slowly whittle them down. This is what we should have been doing. Just whittle them down. We don't even need to fight. I don't even care about being a pussy. Nice bleed. Try to proc another rot on him. Avoid transitions. Mistake. Heal up. Okay, he's gonna transition soon. Nice. Now he's got poison. Bleed him. Bleed. Give him the rod and mist. Got a rod instead of poison, which is good. Okay, he's getting low. I've got a uh, stamina. Bleed. This is a much better idea. Okay, second phase, first time. Nice. This is the strat. This spell is really good. Uh, which one? Yeah, this. Because then I can just spam everything. Yep, when I actually used the class in the way it was supposed to be used, it turned out that it was pretty damn effective. Who would have thought? Brimful of confidence, I believe the time was nigh to rematch the old Scion of Rot and teach him a lesson, which didn't go so well. This was by far the hardest challenge of the run, and I died to this guy way too many times. I don't even think he's that difficult, but I seem to just have a block against him. But after some theory crafting, I discovered the true power of this build. Pest 
fucking darts. Not pest threads, pest darts. This shit was absolutely broken when combined with Blessing of the Sealed God, which lowers your FP consumption and increases your casting speed. Not only did it fire incredibly fast, but the stance damage was also pretty good, and I was getting poise breaks relatively often, which is surprising for a spell. Come on. Yes, come on. Come on, come on, come on, please. Oh, for the love of God. Thank God. <laughs> that took way too long. I was long. pretty relieved that that fight was out the way. Now, using the Scion's Remembrance, I picked up a new rotten weapon, the Great Staff of Decay, which is a really cool colossal weapon with a whopping 105 rot buildup, which is just insane. I didn't unfortunately have enough strength to wield it though at the current moment. So it is now time for the fire giant and if anyone was still doubting the power of pest darts, just check out how it annihilates fire giant's HP from a distance. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, pest threat is broken. Easy. Okay. Pe okay. Pest starts. I underestimated. The speed at which you can spam this is insane. After asserting my dominance over the fire giant, I used the runes to up my strength level so I could wield my new weapon and also check out its unique skill, Break the Seal, which was pretty good. Oh. I then realized I was missing one keystone to pro progress further in the game. So I chose Moog to be our next victim. Nicola is mine and mine alone. It was during this Moog fight that I came to the shocking realization. I'm in fact dog shit at this game and couldn't for the life of me beat Moog with my new great stuff. And I know for a fact that it wasn't the great stuff's fault because it was a pretty solid weapon. After struggling against Moog for a few times, I eventually said fuck it and switched back to the old reliable pest dots and took him down first try. It was just that easy, huh? My, the damage that does is immense. <laughs> okay, then we'll just give him rot. Bleed. And then just spam this. One, two, three, four. The damage this does is just immense. One, two. And we got stuck again. One, two. Immense damage. 17,000 chain. Holy shit. Oh my god. Wait. Spam. One, two. Nice. <laughs> that was way easier. Yeah, Mikkel is mine, bitch. Let me touch that withered arm. We then headed back to Melina so she could take us back to the capital. This looks so weird with no head. <laughs> what the fuck? The end was near at this point. And remember when I said that Carrion Swarm was particularly good against one specific enemy? Yeah, Scar the Crucible Betrayer got humiliated by this spell only. Not only was bleeding him to death, but it was also half stun locking him, so he could barely make his way towards me. Great. I'm certainly glad I discovered this, as I had a lot of trouble with Scott in my last run as the Godskin Celebrant. Bleed. 
bleed. Bleed. This is actually like the best spell for him. <laughs> bleed. 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 Regen stamina. Heal again, keeps getting low. Bleed. 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 Oh, you got me. Wow. Don't hit me. Heal. Uh oh. Just dive to rock, please. Bleed. Just die, please. <laughs> rock got him mid air. Nice. Long and hard didst thou fight, tarnished warrior. At this point, Godfrey was a walk in the park for me. No, I'm dead. No, Rot, please. Uh, except for that part. But staying true to our fellow kindreds of Rot, <sighs> we darted the shit out of him with piss darts in his first phase, to the point where he didn't even get near us, and subsequently cleaned up Mr. Horalu to progress to the final battle. I don't know the range was unlimited. <laughs> we could just send him into the second phase already. Right. Okay, just gotta focus up. No! How do I keep getting caught by that? Your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's got absolutely kicked. Heal up again, and so we don't get caught. No, I'm dead. Oh my god. Please, Rot, I need you. And the pistols! <sighs> Thank you. There we go. It's gotta be a bit patient and let the Rock do its thing. For Rider Beast, I decided it was finally time to give the great stuff of Decay the praise it deserved. It truly is a fantastic, hard-hitting weapon that is perfect for Radagon, smacking him harder than your uncle and giving him rot at the same time. Boom. Okay, it's fine. That did a lot of damage. It's all good, heal up. Okay, he's got a rot, that's excellent. Did a lot of damage there. Need to heal. It's fine. Not sure why that hit me, but okay. Okay, triple. Okay, I don't know how to dodge that. Okay, keep going. Nice. Oh, that's a lot. Uh oh. Yo, uh oh. Yeah, you should be done, yeah. Nice. How many HP do we have? Okay, we can do this. Nice. Okay, we got a stagger, nice. Let's follow up. Huge. Then we'll hit him with this. Big damage. Uh oh. Okay, we healed up. Good damage. Okay, we'll dodge that, getting him close. Uh oh. Ok, 
Couple of hits. Nice. Yes. Okay, he's almost done. Touch that. Touch that. Jump hit. Nice, he's low. Couple of hits. There we go. We did it, baby. Hell yeah. <laughs> wow. That is hilarious. If you guys enjoyed this video, a like would be greatly appreciated. And make sure to check out my previous run, where I beat Elven Ring as a godskin celebrant. Until next time.